Hi, welcome to Blind Owl Outdoors. Uh, this little video here, this is going to be a video response to a few comments I've been having on my channel for different videos. The first one is from David Lacey, and it's a comment on my video titled Marlin Spike Knot is like having an extra set of hands so very useful and his comment is that's not a marlin spike you made a clove hitch well Dick Lacey you must not be very familiar with a, a clove hitch if you take a loop take another loop put the second loop behind the first loop slide your piece inside there to both loops what you get is a a clove hitch actually that looks there that's a clove hitch right there and you can see the back side of it okay the knot that I made on that video is not a marlin spike it's my own personal version of a marlin spike and if you watch my video you can see I explained that that I couldn't understand the video that I watched so I basically I, what I did was I invented my own knot you won't find it in any book anywhere it's totally different what you do is you put your spike across the the rope wrap it around go around the back and then make a clockwise loop and go over the your spike just like that okay now if you put these two together and let me see if I can get a little closer here zoom in on that a little bit Now you can see there, there's nothing even similar to them. This one here has a, a, a twisted loop on it. And this is just a play, plain clove hitch. So there's nothing even close to the same, same on them. The knot that I made is a, works as a dandy marlin spike. Again, it's not a true marlin spike, but it works just perfect. A true marlin spike, let me take this off here is you put the marlin spike on your thing wrap around just the same go around just the same but then you take a little slack off the back loop there and duck it through that loop that's a true marlin spike and that took me quite a while to figure that out but it is totally different and it's nothing anywhere like a clove hitch either I hope you guys can see that or not that's the first uh, comment. The second comment was from a guy named David Turnbull. No, it's about a primitive skills inline spring snare in action, catching feral puppies. He writes shouldn't really be leaving a snare overnight if you're catching puppies. I'm a hunter and never leave a non-target animal overnight for unnecessary suffering. Well David, neither do I. If you watch the video and pay attention to it, you'll see that there's nothing in the video that says leave a trap overnight to catch puppies. The trap is actually, or the, the video is actually about a snare trap a spring snare trap that you would use in a survival condition and the very last comment on the thing in writing talks about replacing the spring snare with a rock 
as a counterweight if you pay attention to it and in a survival situation you would leave your traps out overnight you put as many traps out as you could and you leave as many traps out overnight all day long overnight because you're trying to survive and if you use rocks as a counterweight you don't have to worry about the saplings getting weak so that's an answer to your comment and when I did catch these puppies none of the puppies suffered whatsoever we caught the puppies to give them a, a new home because we don't want feral dogs running around our, our neck of the woods here we don't need it and then we got rid of the feral adults also to try to solve the problem here and where I'm at in the Philippines there are no laws there are no laws for trapping whatsoever you can trap whatever you want that's why there's no game here there's no game there's no fish there's no crabs there's no birds there's nothing here to hunt because they don't have any laws and people completely hunted everything out fished everything out they dynamite the reefs and then there's no more fish they put up uh, crab factories and they catch all the crabs down to the size of a, of a half dollar they're processing in their plant so there's no more crabs anywhere around where I live at you have to go almost 20 miles out in the ocean before you can find any fish to eat so it's, it's pretty sad. Let's see what the next message is here's one here a video I just did an improved haversack I carry a few different things you might not have thought of and this is a message from zero plant zero he says without context I would have thought you were the world's biggest pyromaniac well that's kind of a <laughs> I guess that's kind of a rude statement my wife didn't appreciate it uh, my daughter didn't really like it too much once I explained what a pyromaniac was to both of them and uh, the the reason I showed you what's in my haversack is I was trying to show you some of the different things that I was carrying um, I've never seen anybody carry a gill net before and I never see anybody carry things like glue sticks and the fire stuff that I have in my haversack from everything I've watched on videos and my personal experience a haversack is something you carry with you in case you have a problem somewhere and you have to stay overnight or or you're injured or whatever your haversack is like a mini kit a mini survival kit that takes care of all your needs basically your 10 C's so you have a little shelter uh, something to boil water definitely a way to make fire you know things like that uh, the one thing I didn't put in there was a needle but I had a compass uh, many different things in there uh, the other thing I needed was a, was a good flashlight to carry with me but um, as far as being a pyromaniac, um, that's actually a, uh, <laughs> actually, that's actually almost true because I live for fire and knots. If you watch my videos, most of my videos are fire or knots. I have a lot of bushcraft videos in there too and a lot of other things in there. But I enjoy making fire any way I can and I'm not psychotic about fire, but I... I feel like it's my duty to learn all the different ways to make fire and be proficient at them and I do dozens of demonstrations every year here in the Philippines and trying to show people the different ways to make fire and things and people are amazed here at the way we can make fire with like a bow drill uh, hand drill the the one that's amazing amazed more people than anything is the fire roll which I think personally is fascinating. Um, here in the Philippines, you would think people would know how to do it, seeing it's a primitive place, how to make fire, but they don't. I would say 99% of the people here have no idea how to make a fire without a match or a lighter. And the only people that know anything about it are, are over 70 years old, and they know about the bamboo fire saw. And I've never met a Filipino yet that's even heard of a fire piston. And I've talked to thousands of them, not a single person has ever heard of a fire piston and supposedly they come from here in Malaysia so let's see we're getting more and more subscribers which is very nice 
had a few comments on my new personal space that I've been working on. Uh, another one from Embargo Smithing and Woodcraft. They're talking about uh, had some highs and low spots on my thing that the rain might build up, and there that is very true. I'm I'm aware of that, and the only reason those high and low spots are there is because that's just the way the the contour of the the place wound up being. And I have some I have a couple solutions to save that or to to change that. Oh, also Embardo Smithing and Woodcraft. I did send out a little bag of loot loot to you. I shipped it out about two weeks ago, so you should probably get it in about two weeks. It takes about a month for mail to get to the states from here. It takes about six weeks for mail to get from the states to, to me. Okay, and you should enjoy it. It's, it really works nice. It takes a spark wonderfully. Next comment on the personal space. Let's see, there's another one about Copra. Another one for my daughter's fire. Comment on the termite mound. This is a good one. This is another one from Zero Plant Zero. He says, "Very cool, vi very cool videos. I've heard that the dirt and termite mounds works well as clay, which would account for the smoothness inside." Uh, I agree with that. The 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 clay in the termite mound has to be very good because just think about it, every one of those, every, the whole entire mound is made out of clay mixed with termite spit so there's no there's no stones in it, it's just, it's just basically clay dust made into these mounds and in fact I have been saving quite a few pieces of the mounds and I want to grind them up and we make a few things here and there I thought I'd try to make a couple uh, bowls and maybe uh, maybe a water container or something like that out of, out of the clay. I thought that'd be kind of cool. The, if you watched the one video that I made on making a, a tallow lamp, an oil lamp, I used clay from a, another village where they make pottery and they turned out pretty good except the problem with those was that there's no uh, glaze on them so the oil kind of soaks into the clay. I tried putting wax, melting wax, in the bowl, and it, and it slows the the absorption of the oil quite a bit. But I have a, a couple more there. I'm going to try. I think I'm going to put a coating of super glue on the inside of the uh, oil lamp, and that should probably take care of it. But it's kind of nice to to make your own stuff. Uh, pretty much everything I have here, all my most of my gear, my bushcraft stuff, the things that I make around camps and stuff, I have to make everything here. There's there's just nowhere to buy anything here in the Philippines and I, I have a very limited budget so I, I can't really afford to buy much anyway. Um, anything that I make out of metal, we if you look back one of my videos I have a little personal forge video and it's just a stack of bricks with a hair dryer on it but it works fantastic for for heating up nails and, and pieces of form bar and stuff that you can you can shape then. Uh, we've made a couple knives so far. I made my own anvil out of a piece of scrap metal. Uh, things like that. Let's see. Here's a here's a, another message about a new camp digging out a workspace and starting a fire pit. That was the part two of the of the video. And Eagle John says, wow, what a workout. Time for me to get back in the game and build something like that, waiting on part two, John. And uh, that was that was a lot of work, uh, John. Uh, like I say, I'm, I'm, I'm getting kind of old and I'm, I'm a little out of shape. And uh, it's very hot here in the Philippines, so I could only work about an hour at a time. Uh, sometimes two or three times a day I get out there digging and stuff. And uh, I moved probably about... I would guess about five, maybe five pickup loads of, of clay, rock, and roots. Basically, that's the whole the whole hillside there. That's all it was 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 clay, rock, and roots. Um, and then broke it up with a with a pick, and then shoveled it off and used it as fill. And what I, another thing I did was, when I found good clay, I put that aside, and I'm going to use that to coat the the walls of the of the space and I'm hoping that it'll turn out. I just do a little bit at a time down there. But that's about all I have for you right now.
Uh, thanks for putting up with long video here. If you watch it this long, um, please subscribe, click like, and share our videos if you can. Uh, take the time out if you can and, and teach somebody something. You know, show a kid something, show a neighborhood kid something. You know, making fires might not be the best idea. You know, I, I wouldn't want kids in my neighborhood knowing how to make fires, but uh, show them something though. Show, show, show anybody anything, and you'll be all the better for it. If you want to contact me, send me an email at blindowloutdoors at gmail.com. Or we also well, have a Facebook page, but I don't really use that yet. Um, but send me a, send me a message on the email, and then I can I can correspond back and forth with you. I can't I can't communicate over YouTube. It doesn't let with a phone. It won't let me uh, put a message back on a comment. It did it did a while ago, uh, about six months ago, but it won't anymore for some reason. I, I don't don't know why. But send me an email, and I can I can talk to you guys. It'd be, it'd be great to, to hear what, what some of the other bushcraft people are out there saying. Well, that's it for now. Thanks, and have a nice day.